he says, "Oh, I don't want. I don't know about the things in those worms. Ah, I should bring forth the body might, and bring forth the body might. Bring forth the might is just cultivating the way it is. Just relying on the Dharma to cultivate. Now I will tell you, everything is the Buddha Dharma, but what is it? It is a key, a key which opens a lock. Like during the Dharma, it's just speaking about this key. Explaining Dharma is speaking of a key. The key is、uh, wisdom opens the lock of ignorance. Ignorance has you all locked up, so you don't know anything. The Bodhisattva brings forth the Bodhi mind so that he can find the key. Basically, it is not lost. But you don't know how to use it. The Bodhisattva's intention is to find the key of wisdom to open up the locks of ignorance of all living beings. It's for the sake of understanding the world systems of the ten directions. The Bodhisattva, when there is nothing to do, look for something to do. He wants to know what he doesn't know. Therefore, he brings forth the Bodhi mind to cultivate. Cultivation is the Bodhisattva's job. If he doesn't cultivate, then he loses his job. So, in order to have some work to do, he brings forth the Buddha mind. That is to say, he desires to understand that wonderful world systems are just caused world systems, and caused world systems are just wonderful world systems. He desires to understand, to comprehend wonderful world systems. What are wonderful world systems? Pure and adorned world systems are wonderful world systems. What are cause world systems? They are the evil ones with the five turbidities. If you want to establish a pure and adorned world system, you have to establish it within the evil world of the five turbidities. If you want to change an evil world of the five turbidities so that it becomes a wonderful world system. You must apply your effort within that evil world. Of course, world system, an evil world of the five turbidities, can also be changed to become a pure and a dawn, wonderful world system. If in your own mind you have no defined thoughts, that is just a wonderful world system. If in your own mind you have no defined thoughts. That is just a wonderful world system. If in your mind there is a lot of false thinking, thoughts of desire, greed, hatred, and stupidity, then that is just a caused world system. The wonderful world system and the caused world system are not apart from the world in your mind. They all are not beyond a single thought of the mind. A single thought of the mind can be pure and adorned, and it can also be the evil world with the five turbidities. The false thinking and attachments in your mind are just the caused world system. If you are what without false thinking and attachments, then the caused world system is just the wonderful world system. It is pure and adorned. This is the the drama I explain. Of course, there is a little difference when it is compared. It's just being the same. They are alike because they are both lecturing the sutras. In lecturing the sutra, there is not one who is right and one who is wrong, or one who is good and one who is bad. If you are able to have that much wisdom, then you will explain that much principle. There is no fixed measure to principle. Although you say something is good, yet there is always something even better. You say something is not good, yet there is always something which is worse. So I verify that whatever you say is correct. Why do I say that I will certify everything you say? Because for me, everything is okay. It doesn't matter whether you speak well or badly, just so long as you are not like a mute. You have to speak the drama. Before I said that a bodhisattva wants to look for a job, there are people who had this false thought. What? Who gives him money? Who pays him? A bodhisattva has a job. Who pays him? People who ask these questions should certainly give the Bodhisattva money for his work. If you have this thought, it is just false thinking. 
The Bodhisattva does it all as his responsibility. He does not seek a reward. He doesn't think like us common people, whom we do a little bit of work, seek an equal amount in return. The Bodhisattva isn't like this. He just does whatever he is able to do and does not seek a reward for it. Common people who truly understand also are ones who do not seek a reward. So it is said, one does not wish for a reward when doing good. Naturally, one's dreams are peaceful and one's spirit is clear. One does good things without wishing to attain a reward. Also, it is said, one who studies, although it is not for the sake of fame, nonetheless acquires a refined character. Some who is learned may not have attained the position of Chuang Yuan, the highest rank scholar. Nonetheless, his character is exalted and his disposition elegant and controlled. So the Bodhisattva works without seeking a reward. Whoever works without seeking a reward has the heart of a bodhisattva. This is the bodhisattva state. Now we are translating sutras. Whoever does this and doesn't want money he is cultivating the bodhisattva path. So regardless of whether our work is good or bad, if we don't receive any money for our work from others, our heart will be blissful. Now, this Bodhisattva also wants to know how Sutra world systems which face upward are just overturned world systems and overturned world systems are just world systems which face upwards. Small world systems are just great world systems and great world systems are just small world systems. Wide world systems are just narrow world systems, and narrow world systems are just wide world systems. A single world system is just ineffable world systems, and ineffable world systems are just a single world system. Ineffable world systems enter a single world system, and a single world system enters ineffable world systems. Defined world systems are just pure world systems, and pure world systems are just divine world systems. He desires to know that within the tip of a single hair, there are all the world systems' different natures. And within all the world systems, there is a single a substantial nature of a single tip of a hair. Commentary before it said that the Bodhisattva who brings forth the Bodhi mind wishes to know that wonderful, inconceivable world systems are just caused world systems. He wishes to understand this principle. Now he also desires to understand how world systems which face upwards, that is, worlds which are above, are just overturned world systems. Overturned world systems are those which are below. World systems above and below are of a single substance. So it also says, and overturned world systems are world systems which face upwards. Now, do you want to know why a world system faces upwards and why a world system is overturned? The foundation of the overturned world system is the world system which faces upward. It's also just the overturned world system. Small world systems are just the great world systems. These small world systems extend from the small to become great. When a great world system is divided up, it is found to be made up of parts which are small world systems. Therefore, the small and the great are non-obstructive, and the wonderful and defined are non-obstructive. World facing upward and downwards are also non-obstructive. These are all types of non-obstructive states. And great world systems are just small world systems. The Bodhisattva knows their fundamental source and substance. Wide world systems and narrow world system aid just wide world systems. If one takes a wide world system and puts it into a single particle of dust or into a mustard seed, that is just a narrow world system. A single world system is just ineffable world systems. 
word systems have a direct relationship with another with one another every particle of dust and every word system interpret a trait this is like living beings those living beings are just these living beings and these living beings are just those living beings living beings have a mutual mutually interconnected electric waves within their minds why is it possible to attain the penetration of others thoughts the penetration of others thoughts is a function of these electric waves why do all function like radar if your cultivation is complete then every hair pore and the tip of every hair are like radar scanners these radar scanners penetrate one another mutually therefore fundamentally the penetration of others thoughts is not a very strange affair it's just that at present we living beings don't know how to use our innate computers we do not know how to use our electric waves of our radar after we understand them then we can use them our cultivating is just learning about computers electric waves radar and all the various kinds of scientific knowledge so a single word system and ineffable word systems interpenetrate because every particle of dust and every word system has electric waves and all have radar within them and these particles of dust and other particles of dust are interpenetration all of them have a direct relationship with another with one another therefore a single word system is just ineffable word systems and ineffable word systems are just a single word system ineffable word systems enter a single word system and a single word system enters ineffable word systems defined word systems are just pure word systems and pure word systems are just defined word systems Defined world systems are also able to enter pure world systems, and pure world systems are able to enter defined world systems. Because they are also mutually interpenetrated, he desires to know that within the tip of a single hair, there are all the world systems different natures. This is the type of perfectly fused and non-obstructive state which the Bodhisattva can comprehend with ease all the hair tips and all world systems also have a direct relationship with one another and within all world systems all of the world systems which exist there is the single substantial nature of a single tip of a hair sutra he decides to know that within a single world system there comes into being all world systems and he decides to know that all world systems are without a substantial nature because he desires in a single thought to exhaustively know all the vast and great world systems without obstruction he brings forth the mind for Anuttara Samyak Sambuddhi disciple of the Buddha moreover putting this analogy aside suppose there is a person who in a single thought moment is able to know the number of compass of coming into being and destruction of Asamkhya world systems in the east and each thought is like this to the exhaustion of Asamkhya compass there is no one who is able to know the limit of the number of this compass suppose there is a second person who in a single thought is able to know the number of compass the former person knew in a samkhya compass in the same way expand this until it reaches the tenth person in the south west and north the four intermediaries above and below it is also like this disciple of the buddha the limit of the number of compass of coming into being and destruction of those as samkhya ya world systems in the ten directions can be known yet the limit of the merit and virtue of good rules of the bodhisattva who first brings forth the might of anusara samyak sambuddhi cannot be known why? Because the Bodhisattva has no uniform limit.
He brings forth the mind for Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi only for the sake of knowing the number of compass of coming into being and destruction of those world systems. He brings forth the mind for Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi in order to totally know the compass of coming into being and destruction of all world systems exhaustively without remainder.